Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and this morning our fridge started making a really interesting noise. I want to make sure you hear it. You know what, let's open the fridge and stick it in. Sounds like a helicopter or a rattle. You should have been able to hear that. But anyways, it's rattling up, making some noise. Some people call it a helicopter noise. I've seen this more than once before. And usually this happens because ice buildup goes around the fan. There's a fan in the freezer and then that fan starts to hit the ice and that's what's making that rattle noise. And sometimes it gets a lot louder than this too. And one of the main reasons this happens is because people overstuff their freezer. There's just way too much stuff in here. Ours is not that bad. Granted, we do have some stuff right in front of the fan slots there where the air blows. So that's probably not the best spot for it. Generally, you don't want to have your freezer fully stuffed. It should just be like halfway. So there's enough room for circulation to happen for air circulation. But anyway, this rattle will not do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pull everything out of the freezer. And if you have another fridge, it's great to be able to just put everything into the other fridge. Or if you have a freezer, a standalone freezer or a big cooler, you can dump everything in there. I'm going to try to work fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all this out and just put it on the counter. Okay, so I got all the stuff out and man, this sound, it sounds like a cat purring, but a lot louder. But it's okay, we're gonna get rid of this sound. My wife really doesn't like it. Look at that, we're starting to get some water leak. A little bit of water leakage. By the way, you might wanna have a towel handy. I'll explain a little bit later why. So we got all the stuff out. At this point, you have three options. Option one would be to just take everything out of the freezer and the fridge, put it somewhere else, or if it's winter outside, maybe you could just throw it in the snow and just unplug the fridge for a full day. This is where you would need the towels. So if there is any ice buildup in there, if you unplug the fridge for a full day, most of that stuff should thaw out. But keep in mind that that ice, when it thaws out, there might be a little puddle here and there might be water on the floor because the little drain pan on the bottom of the fridge might overflow. That's why you might need some towels to put on the floor under your fridge. And if you have hardwood floor, that can make the hardwood floor bubble up. So do be careful with that. Option two is to just take a hair dryer and start hair drying the freezer from the back wall. See these grates right here? You'll just take the hair dryer. I actually don't have one, so this isn't even an option for me right now. I have a steamer, but I understand that most people don't have a steamer, so I'm not gonna use that. But you would take a hair dryer and you would just blow inside of these grates here and here and on top over here. Of course, you're going to do this after the fridge is off. And the reason you're doing that is to get heat in there and to melt all that ice buildup. Actually, even this time while I had this freezer open, I can already hear the snapping and cracking because the ice is melting and the rattle is actually not as loud as it used to be. So it's already starting to thaw a little bit and you can see these little water drops too. So it is thawing already. Let's see if I can take this shelf off. And by the way, I do understand that there are many different kinds of fridges out there. If your fridge is not like mine, that's okay. Just look up a video on YouTube on how to replace the defrost heater on your particular fridge, be it Samsung or Whirlpool or whatever. This is a GE top load fridge. You can type in Samsung French door fridge, how to replace defrost heater and they will show you in that video in the process of replacing the defrost heater, how to take off the back panel and everything. So method one is to simply unplug the fridge and leave it unplugged for a day. Method two is to unplug it and use a hair dryer for about 10, 15 minutes inside of those grates and that should thaw out most of it. And option three is to take that back panel off and just visually verify what's back there and maybe chisel the stuff off or just let it thaw out, or if you have a hair dryer, just directly hair dry it right there. Okay, so I'll take this shelf off so it's not in the way. I was gonna put it on top of the fridge, but it's really hairy up there. I, I better not, I'll just put it on the floor. And most of the time, all you're gonna need is just a Phillips. There's gonna be a couple of screws that hold this back panel in or maybe they're hiding under little tabs that you need to pluck out with a flathead screwdriver before you can take this thing out. Once again, if you have a different fridge, you can look up on YouTube how to disassemble the back panel on your particular fridge, whatever brand it is. 
So I'll take these four Phillips screws out. And just so you know, some of these screws are different. They're not all the same. So do pay attention where you're taking the screws out. They may be different lengths. So you don't confuse them when you're putting them back in. Okay, so I got all the screws out. I'm gonna try to pull this off first. So in my case, I just needed to pull this up and out. I've worked on enough fridges to be able to just look at it and tell. If you're not sure, once again, look up a YouTube video. So I can actually see the fan right away, so I don't even have to pull this whole back panel off. And I think at this point, it's a good time to turn the power off to the fridge. Okay, so in my case, there's not a lot of ice for sure. If there was any ice, it looks like it already thawed out. It must have not been a big layer. And perhaps that is because we had the freezer filled up and these grates were blocked by things. So while I had it open and while I was chattering and taking stuff out, this thought out and it stopped making as much noise as well. I can see that the fan is good. There's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes it's possible that it's cracked, but most of the time what I see is this fan will be completely blocked with ice around it. And eventually these fan blades, they start to scratch on that ice and that's what makes that horrendous noise. But just in case, I'm going to go ahead and take this back panel off and just take a look and see, see what my backside is looking like. And just for anybody that's interested to see what that back looks like. We have the evaporator coil in the back. So you get to see what an evaporator coil looks like if you haven't seen one before. And be careful when you're pulling these off because usually there's going to be a defrost thermostat or thermistor attached to it. In my case, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on this side be behind this plug. So I'm not going to take this out all the way. I'm just going to swing it out like this just so we can look inside. Okay. No, there was no, there was nothing attached. So actually this whole panel comes off. But sometimes there is stuff attached to it. So like I said, be careful when you're pulling the back panel off. Just do it slowly, don't yank on it. And voila, here's our evaporator coil. As you can see, it's dripping. There was actually not, there was barely any ice buildup on here, which is a good thing. If you do have a lot of ice buildup on here, you do want to thaw it out. But if it's a lot of ice, your problem might be more severe than just your freezer being overstuffed. It's possible that your defrost thermostat this guy right here is bad. So it's not sensing when it should turn on and defrost this coil. So it just keeps freezing and freezing and freezing and the ice keeps building up. So you could potentially have to replace this. And most frequently what I see the problem being, if it's all frozen over like that, there's a defrost heater or lamp right on the bottom here. And that burns out. I don't want to take mine out right now. There's a wire plug right here for it and one right here. I'm not going to take mine out, but I'll add a picture so you can see what it looks like. But that thing burns out. If you have a multimeter, you can ohm it out. If it's OL, that means it's bad. But usually, if it's a lot of ice here, that means the unit is not defrosting. You would replace that defrost heater, and you would also replace the defrost thermostat just in case. Usually, we would replace them as a pair. But if there's not a ton of ice and there's just some ice buildup around the fan, then of course just defrosting around the fan and getting that ice out of there should be enough and then just stop stuffing your freezer. By the way, if you're using a drill like I am right now to put all the screws back, make sure you turn down the drill speed or the torque to the lowest setting so you don't strip any plastic out. All right, so I got it all back together. Now I'm going to turn it back on and see if our noise went away. All right, we're back in business. Let's take the mic off again. So far, so good. Very nice. This sounds like what it used to sound like. Good, good. I'll be right back. I need to put all this stuff back in really quick. It's already starting to melt. Okay, so I got everything back in, and even though this looks stuffed, it's basically pulling air in from the bottom grates and it's pushing it out from the top ones right there. 
So I actually left a space right here so that air can circulate. So there is a space here, and this freezer is actually not that big. Um, and I completely left this one open right here. So the ice trays are on either side, but this is fully open. So this really is about as full as you want to have a freezer be. You don't want to be you know, crammed up to here and then everything stuffed into here because then for sure you're going to have a little freezing over problem. I should probably close my fridge. Well guys, and that is all I wanted to show you. Hopefully this video will help somebody out who's having a loud fridge issue. And there is one last thing that I forgot to talk about. If you're going to use a hair dryer, first of all, don't get too close to the plastic if the walls or the backside is made out of plastic. If you get too close to it, that can warp and bubble up. I know that from experience because I've done that once. If you get too close, it will bubble up and try not to keep the hair dryer in the same place for a long time. Just kind of keep it moving around. If you have a heat gun, just, just don't use a heat gun. But if you do, th then you have to be even more careful with the heat gun because that's a lot hotter. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out. And if you have any other comments about this kind of scenario, or if you've been through something like this and your situation was a little different than what I showed, please let us know how it went for you in the comments below. There's a gecko climbing down the wall. Look at that. Where was he hiding? He's ruining my outro. Anyway, I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me tell you about ground cayenne pepper. My sister just shared this trick with me recently and I've tried it a couple times so far and it's been amazing. So let me back up a little bit. This is what she said. When she went to the ocean, she cut her foot on a rock and it took her about a month for that cut to heal up. Cause you know, she kept walking on it and it started getting infected and yellow and nasty stuff. You know, it took forever to heal up. Second time around, she cut her foot again but what she did is she put a bunch of this cayenne pepper on that wound and she said that that cut healed up in about three days. So here's the secret about cayenne. It works as a natural painkiller. So your wound is not going to be throbbing as much. It's a natural disinfectant and it actually does not burn. Contrary to what you would think, you would think that would be burning that wound or your cut, but it doesn't burn much at all. It's anti-inflammation. So the cut or the wound does not swell up as much and the best part about it, it stops the bleeding. So if you dump a bunch of this stuff on the wound or the cut, it'll stop the bleeding pretty quickly. I actually know some families, like my sister's family, that have cayenne pepper everywhere. So they have it in their car, it's part of their first aid emergency kit and everything, because this stuff is just that powerful. So there you have it. Now you know about cayenne pepper as well. It's a great thing to have around in the case of an emergency. By the way, if you're interested in stuff like this, you should really check out Barbara O'Neill. She talks about a ton of natural remedies of this sort very interestingly.